All right, uh, the shopsmith is in pieces, as you can see. It is getting some upgrades. It's getting a VFD and a nice big stop switch. And there's the new motor sitting over there, three-phase motor, one horsepower, nice big Baldor Reliance. Uh, the one that came off it was actually a Marathon Farm Duty, so actually a pretty good motor. Still one horsepower, but single phase, one horsepower, three phase. The reason I'm going to three phase in a VFD is that way I don't have to keep switching the pulley belts to change speeds. I can just put on a nice, uh, fairly small pulley, or actually this one will probably do just fine for size, and I can vary the speed via the controller. Um, nice thing is these controllers even have torque compensation, so when you're at lower RPM, it'll add voltage um, to accommodate um, the lower RPM torque load since these control frequency. Anyhow, so uh, yeah, let's get dig into it here. I've got some work to do. I've got to make an adapter plate to mount the motor, but that's not a big deal. That's pretty easy to do. A bit of weld welding and it'll be done. And uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, um, so what I've done so far, I just pulled off the pulley. I had to go and pick up all the new pulleys and everything that I was gonna use. Um, fun fact is that Shopsmith, in their infinite wisdom, decided to make this a 13 16th shaft, which is a non-nominal diameter for most pulley sheaves and everything. So I got a three quarter inch pulley sheave and I rounded it out or lathe, took a lathe, the metal lathe and bored the hole out to the correct diameter. So it actually fits on nice and snug. Now, what I also did was put two set screws opposing either way. Um, now this is a clamp collar. So when you tighten the sheave down on it, it's gonna clamp onto the shaft, but there is no key on the shaft. They're just a flat spot for a set screw. So I wanted to make sure that I could tighten a set screw down on that, keep it from moving around too much, but then also be able to tighten the pulley down onto this thing. So we're gonna get a little farther along here. Um, I'm not gonna be filming this live as I go along, or I'm not gonna be filming this in time-lapse because it's too boring. It's just a lot of real weird fitment, but that's the important part. And yeah, let's get to it. All right, moving farther along on the mounting plate here, which is, uh, this is where the motor mounts is underneath the machine. These, um, I'm gonna extend these actually. That way I actually have more motor height adjustment. They're pretty short, um, but I actually have to have some wrap, some stainless steel rod in the shop that's uh, the right size. So we're just making the longer ones. One thing I just quickly did off camera was put a little bit of a groove in here so that that set screw has something to sit in and it can't drop out of it. So that's the plan there. Actually, I might need to make it a little longer. Yeah, I do need to make it a little longer, but that's what that's for. Hey, look at that. Did you see a mouse? Go get him. Go get him. Go get him. You saw something. What'd you see? All right, well, I think we got our thumbnail there. That is, uh, oh yeah, look at that. That is sexy. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay, focus. I'm Chris and we're back finishing up the uh, Shopsmith project here. And I'm gonna quickly run you through um, what is the final product from the last section of this video. So what have I done? Why have I done it? And how much did it cost me? Well, let's start off with why did I do it? Well, I wanted a variable speed lathe, but I didn't want to have to switch the belt around because I'm lazy. And therefore I did more work so I could be more lazy, if that makes sense, which it should. And the whole project, well, the whole project cost me about $650. And that includes the machine. Um, now, why would I do that? Why would I, why wouldn't I just go out to the store or go online and buy myself a used lathe with this capacity? Well, I live in Kanakistan or the great, great frozen white north of Hoth. And up here, machinery is pretty expensive. Quite often, it's a good margin more expensive than in the States. For this same capacity, I would be paying at least 1500 Canadian pesos Probably more than that if I actually wanted a quality machine. So this was more cost effective. And yes, I could have gone out, worked, made money, and bought the more expensive one. But that's not nearly as fun as doing it yourself. 
and I learn stuff. So what have I got going on? What's new? Well, the motor's new. It's a one horsepower, three phase motor. The switch to kill the power, 40 bucks for that, 200 bucks for that, 150 for that, about 50 bucks more for the pulleys. And all in all, about 650, like I said. The VFD lets you turn single phase 220 into three phase 220. Or actually, you can take any single phase and turn it into three phase. You can get these things for 110 to 110, 110 to 120, 220 to 220, and on and on and on. Uh, and then I went to a duplex pulley or duplex belt. And there's a good reason behind that. In my experience as a marine engineer and as a past heavy mechanic, I've always found that machinery that runs with more than one belt tends to run smoother. And I'm going to show you that right now, actually. We're going to hit start on this. And we're going to see these belts kind of hopping. And the reason they hop is that there's a wider spot on them. And it seems to be that when you have multiple belts and multiple of those high spots, it does seem to eliminate some of the vibration. And in this case, it worked. This machine does run considerably smoother than it did with, one sing with a single belt on it. Um, now, I have revolutions displayed here, and that's revolutions of the motor not the spindle, because there is a reduction. It's only like 10% though. Um, and then I can turn it all the way up to the full motor speed, which is 1750, which would be great for sanding and polishing, but then I can also crank it right down to normal turning speeds. And it does have a brake. So when you actually hit stop button, it actually does brake the motor using um, basically the magnetic field. Uh, and then you can also see your frequency if you want to. So that's my frequency right now. So if I hit start, it's starting at 20 hertz. And then you can go all the way up to 65. And there we go. That's the project completed. I'm really happy with it. I think it's uh, real sexy, but I guess beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It does the job. That's the important thing. It saved money. And I am learning. So there's no reason for me to go out and buy a $2,000 wood turning machine. $2,000, $3,000 lathe, when I could just modify this one. And I really like the look of these things. I think they're kind of cool. They're classic. I just want it modernized. It's a bit lumpy. Yeah, it might be a little more ugly now, but it's cool in my, my opinion. Anyhow, that's what I got for you today. That's the end of the project. If you have any questions or comments, shoot them down below. If you're thinking about doing this yourself, I can say I recommend it. Um, changing machinery in the shop from single phase to three phase so you have variable frequency drive and, and speed control, I really like it. But if you have any other suggestions or comments, blah, 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 you guys know the rest. If you didn't like the video, go watch something else. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And yeah, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching.